In this video, we will be solving this question which says Professor Goodhart always gives two midterms in his communication class. He only uses the higher of the two scores that the students get on the midterm when he calculates the scores grade. With this information, your first part says that Nancy Lerner wants to maximize her grade in this course. Let X1 be the score on her first midterm and let X2 be the score on her second midterm. Which combination of scores would Nancy prefer where your X1 is 20 and X2 is 70 or X1 is 60 and X2 is also 60. So let's see what all information is given in the question. We have X1 be the score on her first midterm and X2 be the score on her second midterm. So the combination becomes x1 comma x2 where x1 is the score on a first midterm and x2 is the score on a second midterm. Also the professor uses only the higher of the two scores that the student gets which means given these two are the scores on her midterm if x1 is greater than x2 that is the score on a first midterm is greater than the score on a second midterm then the score of first midterm would be considered there could be a second scenario where x2 is greater than x1 that is the score on her second midterm is greater than the score on a first midterm then the score of a second midterm would be considered to calculate the course grade the last scenario is where x1 is equal to x2 then it does not really matter which score is considered as they both are equal so it would be x1 or x2 now question gives us two combination to see what her scores would be based on all this information the first combination is x1 is 20 and x2 is 70 that means a combination becomes 20 comma 70 now note that 70 is greater than 20 so that is 70 is greater than 20 and if you compare this combination with this combination you will see that 20 is your x1 and 70 is your x2 that means the score on a second midterm is higher than the score of a first midterm which means the score of 70 would be considered now consider a second scenario where your x1 is 60 and x2 is also 60 then your combination becomes 60 comma 60 now since both are equal then the score of 60 would be considered as they both are equal so when her combination was 20 comma 70 then the final score was 70 which was considered to calculate the grade of the course and when both of the grades are 60 the final score is 60 as they both are equal now let's move on to the next part which says on the graph use red ink to draw an indifference curve showing all the combination of scores that Nancy likes exactly as much as x1 is equal to 20 and x2 is equal to 70. Also use the red ink to draw an indifference curve showing the combinations that Nancy likes exactly as much as x1 is equal to 60 and x2 is equal to 60. Now we here we have to draw two indifference curves first for the combination of 20 comma 70 which we saw in this part would give you the score of 70 and we have to draw another indifference curve for the combination of 60 comma 60 which gives you the score of 60 just like we saw here so when you have to draw the indifference curve you have to find all the combinations of the score on both the midterms which give you the final score of 70 when we are drawing the indifference curve for this combination and when we are drawing the indifference curve for this combination we want the score of 60 so let's do that now this is your graph where on the x-axis you have the grade on first midterm and on the y-axis you have the grade on second midterm let's first draw the graph for the combination of 20 comma 70 where Nancy scores 20 on a first midterm and 70 on a second midterm thus the point will lie here now let's consider another point which is suppose 40 comma 70 that means she put an extra effort in your first midterm and she was able to score 40 but the score on her second midterm was 70 so if you consider this combination then 70 is greater than 40 which means according to the professor he would be considering the higher score which is 70 thus with this combination also we are able to score 70 hence it will lie on the same indifference curve as the combination 20 comma 70 let's consider another point again suppose that point is 54 comma 70 since again 70 is the higher of the two thus we are able to get the score of 70 hence this point will also lie on the indifference curve now let's consider a point 70 comma 70 where she scores equal score on both the exam 
equal grade on both the midterms and if that is the case then we are eventually able to get midterm score of 70 hence this will also be a part of your indifference curve so by joining all these points we are able to get this straight line now assuming that professor only gives positive grades which means you are x1 or the grade on a first midterm is always positive and this is our assumption then this section of the line won't be a part of your indifference curve also consider another point such as 80 comma 70 now if you have a combination as 80 comma 70 then nancy would be able to score 80 for her midterms but we want those combination which are able to get nancy exactly 70 so this point won't be a part of the indifference curve that means any point beyond the combination 70 comma 70 would not be a part of the indifference curve so consider a very closest point to 70 comma 70 suppose you consider the point 70.1 2 comma 70 now if she has this combination then she is able to score 70 comma 1 2 which is higher than 70 that means she would be getting a higher score on her midterm than 70 hence this won't be a part of this indifference curve that's why this segment of the line is in dash form as this won't be a part of your indifference curve thus you have your indifference curve as this but now let's see if there are any other combinations as well which gives nancy the score of 70 so after figuring out this part of the indifference curve let's see if there are any more points or any more combination which gives nancy the score of 70 suppose you have a point as 70 comma 62 now again 70 is greater than 62 hence nancy would be able to score 70 that, that means this point will be a part of your indifference curve likewise the point 70 comma 44 would also be a part of your indifference curve now see you could have taken any other combination and see if that is able to give you 70 score or not i'm just taking these points randomly out of my choice it does not really matter which points you are considering till the point that combination is giving you a score of 70 so suppose another point as 70 comma 10 again this combination will give me the score of 70 that means that all these points will be a part of your same indifference curve so let's join them so i am able to get this straight line now let's see if this entire line would belong to my indifference curve or is there any segment of the line that won't be a part of my indifference curve for that consider an example 70 comma 77 now since here the professor considers the higher of the two scores then the final score for nancy would be 77 which is greater than 70 thus this point won't be a part of your indifference curve that means any combination beyond 70 comma 70 will not be a part of your indifference curve hence that is in your dashed line so also again assuming that professor is only giving positive grades which means your x2 would always be positive and if that is the scenario then this part of the line segment won't be a part of your indifference curve thus your final indifference curve would look like this where you have this inverted l sort of a figure having the vertex at 70 comma 70 thus this is your indifference curve showing all the combination of scores that nancy likes exactly as much as x1 is equal to 20 and x2 is equal to 70 now let's draw the indifference curve showing the combination that nancy likes exactly as much as x1 is equal to 60 and x2 is equal to 60 following the same steps just like we did for the indifference curve corresponding to the combination of 20 comma 70 we have our combination of 60 comma 60 here now consider a point this which would be approximately of the form 20 comma 60 again that would give nancy the score of 60 as 60 is greater than 20 this is 20 comma 60 likewise this point 40 comma 60 will also be a part of nancy's indifference curve but a point here that would be of the form Suppose 63,60, it will give the Nancy a score of 60, which means this won't be a part of your indifference curve. Hence, any point beyond 60,60 won't be a part of your indifference curve. Likewise, we see that this point and this point would also be a part of your indifference curve, giving you the final indifference curve as this. Thus, this red indifference curve shows the combination that Nancy likes exactly as much as 60, 60, where she is getting the grade of 60 on both the midterms.